This is going to be an in-depth video about Google Meet. We'll explore different ways to start a Google Meet, as well as some extensions to use within it, and lastly, the settings. So, in order to start, we need to make sure we're logged into our Chrome web, web browser using our GSCS credentials. So clicking on that top right icon and making sure your GSCS credentials are in there so that you have full access to everything we are going to do. Now you notice right away you do have a Google Apps icon. You can click on this icon and you will see a Google Meet there where you can start a Google Meet. However, if we are going to be using Google Meet with students and within our Google Classroom, our best option is actually to start right within our Google Classroom. So when we open up our classroom and go into one of our classes, you can see that right here, I have a Meet icon here, a Meet link, and this is viewable to all of my students. So my students could go into the classroom, they could click on this link, and we could all meet together, or I could meet with individual students in our private meeting. That is a really, really great option because it is super easy for students to use. They know it's always in that banner. They just have to go into their classroom and click it. Now, how do I get that turned on? When you're in your class, you need to go over to the settings bar here, scroll down until you see meet. Now, this would say generate meet code. You would click on that, and then you would make sure that it is turned on to be visible to all students. This would make sure that it is always in that top banner so students can click on it whenever you ask them to join a meeting. If you use this drop down menu, you can copy that code and send it out to other individuals, maybe your admin if they aren't in your Google Classroom, or you can reset it. So if the code is ever compromised by someone and you have people jumping into your Meet who shouldn't be there, you can reset that code. You can also make it so that it's not visible to students um, until you turn it on. So if you wanna keep turning it on and off, you can do that as well. Going back into your classroom, when I click on this meet link, it'll bring me right to meet and it starts the meeting for my students. So a student cannot click on this meet link and be brought to a meeting without my knowledge or without me starting it first. I'm the owner of the meet, I need to start it before any students can join. The same thing goes for any other teachers who you have added to your classroom. As soon as they start the meet by clicking on this code, students can now join the meeting. So I can press join now and I'm brought to a screen where you can see I can also send out the join code from here. Um, there's also a phone number so if a student doesn't have access to a computer but wants to call in they can do so there and using that pin. There is the add people option here. If I want to click on that, I can directly add individuals' emails. However, be aware that it'll oftentimes send to their junk email. So you'll have to warn them to go to their junk email. You can also add people by clicking on the participants icon over here and pressing add people, again, typing in their email address. Let's go through a second way to join Meet. So going back to our dashboard and seeing that there is a meet icon there, you can click on that icon. I can go in and I can press this join or start a meeting right here to begin a meeting and share that code with others. Now, instead of always having to share out a link, if I'm doing a meeting with other students or with my staff, I can put in a unique name for this meeting and students or staff members will be able to join by also typing in the name just like I'm about to do. So if I'm part of St. Mark and I want Mark staff to always go in and start a meeting with this name, then that's exactly what I can do. I can type in Mark staff, press continue, and I'm now brought to the meeting where the name is Mark Staff. So any other individual who wants to join the meeting, they can simply go 
into their meat. They can press join or start. They can type in mark staff and they're brought into a meeting where I'm already in. Keep in mind, this will generate a new link every time you start it, but the name will always be the same. That being said, anyone with a GSCS account can join that meeting if they know the name of it. So if they know you're having a Mark staff meeting um, and they type that in, they can also join. So once you're in that meeting, you can see again, I can copy this link out. I could email that to individuals and they would be able to join my meeting as well. Let's take a look around Google Meet. So number one, down here in the corner, I have a little more options tab. When I open that up, we can start with settings. Now settings allows me to change my audio input and output as well as my video. So if you're ever having troubles with audio or video, click on that. Maybe you are using a camera or a microphone that is not working. Going back to these three dots, I can also change the layout. So Google Meet now allows 16 participants to be seen in a tiled view. So I could click on that tiled view and it would change my layout to see the most amount of participants, which would be up to 16. I could also do sidebar, which then puts the speaker in the middle and other individuals on the side, or I could go to spotlight, which would just spotlight the individual talking. Going over here, at the bottom, I can turn my microphone on and off and my video on and off. Moving over to the left, you can see there is a present now option. When I click this, I can choose to present my entire screen, a window, or a Chrome tab. If I press present my entire screen, that would mean I'm presenting a file or something that is downloaded to my computer. A window and a Chrome tab are both internet tabs. So keep that in mind. These are on the internet, this is on your computer. So if I want to download or show a window, I would click on that and then I would have to actually click on the window I want to share. So I'd have to touch it, make sure it's highlighted, and then the share option reveals itself. If I do present now and choose a tab, I can choose the tab I want to present, press share, it'll take me to that tab, and then I have this little icon at the top that tells me that tab is being presented. So individuals in the meeting would be able to, first of all, still see me on video, but they would also be able to see this entire screen as I present it to them. As I switch through tabs, it'll ask me if I want to share this tab instead. At any point, I can press stop sharing, and then I can go back into my Meet. Turning on captions makes it so that the individual speaking has captions at the bottom. It'll say the individual's name up here and then type out anything they are saying. Going over to the left, again, this is just your bar you can bring up to see your joining info. And lastly, we have a recording option. So this recording option is great if you are maybe having a meeting that you want to record and post in your classroom later. But please keep in mind, if you are doing meetings and teaching content to students, um, it's great to record it and post in your classroom, but you cannot, cannot record students. So if there are students in the meeting, their video must be completely off. That is a very large privacy issue. So if you are recording a meeting with you speaking and there are students in that meeting, their videos cannot be on. Now, when I press that record button, all it does is it pops up a consent 
So I have to ask consent to anyone in the meeting if I'm allowed to record. Then once I accept that, it just goes up over here and it's red, it's now recording. When I stop this recording, it'll save automatically in my Google Drive. So just going back over here and pressing stop recording. It takes a second to generate in your drive, but when it does, you will get an email that'll take you right to that video location. So at the top, what do I have going on here? First of all, this is my chat option. If I am using this with students and I expect them to have their mic off so that it is nice and quiet and I'm not getting any feedback, I could use this chat option to have students type or ask questions along the side. I can also click over here to see all the individuals in my meeting. When you present, you're going to see another little screen with your name on it. It just means that that's your presenting screen. So if I had a bunch of students in this video and I wanted to end my meeting, what I would need to do is I would need to make sure I'm on this people's tab and see that all students have exited the meeting before I leave. That is good practice to make sure that nobody stays in the meeting after you are gone so that um, the meeting is always being monitored by a teacher. If there was a student in here and they weren't leaving, you can actually click on their icon. It's going to be difficult to show because I have no participants. But what you would do is you would click on their icon and then it gives you an option to remove them from the meeting. So you can do this if a student is being difficult, not leaving. Go ahead, remove them out by clicking on that participant tab and then you can safely exit out of your meeting. It is closed, students can't enter back in. Also at the top here, you can see I have a grid view. So this is actually an extension, which is over here. If you installed the original grid view from earlier in the year, um, Google Meet was updated and that doesn't work anymore. So what you need to do is you need to right click on that extension, remove it from your Chrome, and then go back into Google Chrome to, sorry, and back into the Google, Google Chrome web store and re-download it. So what this extension does is if I turn it on, it will show all the participants in the meeting and I have it so it also includes myself in the meeting. So it'll enable a grid view that will show everyone in the meeting. Um, you can choose different options like highlighting the speaker, or only showing participants with video but it just shows more than that capacity of 16 people that Meet has. And I just download it by going to the web store. So I always just type in web store, click the top one, Chrome web store, and then typing in Meet Grid View and downloading this top one here. Just press add it to Chrome and it automatically pops up over here. Now a second extension that I really like is the tab resize tool. This is this one here, add it to your Chrome. What it does is it allows me to see two tabs at the same time. So I could press it while I'm on my Meet. And now I can have my meeting on one side and maybe a presentation brought up on the other side. This is very, very convenient when you're doing synchronous learning. You can get students to install that on their Chrome as well. And if I'm using, let's say, something like Pear Deck and presenting to them, or maybe a Google Slides, they could all be on the same document at the same time. They could then see you on the left, and they would be able to see their document or your presentation on the right. This would also work if you're doing something like Kahoot with your class. You could have all your participants in your meeting, and then on the right here, you would be able to see that Kahoot. At any point, you can just resize your tabs by dragging them over, making them larger or um, smaller. So just to review, you have two different ways of using Google Meet. Number one is to go into your Google Classroom and to make sure that header is on. That is the number one way to use Google Meet with students if you have a Google Classroom. Number two is to use that unique 
code name or class name that you develop and go through your dashboard, click on meet and type in that name. Number three, if you're joining a Google Meet, you can always just use that code here and join that way. Lastly, you can schedule a Google Meet using your calendar and there is an add-on with your Outlook calendar. However, that is for a different video. So keep your eye out for that calendar video as well. Keep an eye out for a cast video. That Google Meet cast video will show you how to present a video within a Google Meet and have it play audio to everyone else.